not to us, not to us. But to your name be the glory. Not to us, not to us. But to your name be the glory. Not to us, not to us. But to your name be the glory. To your name be the glory. To your name be the glory. There's been a 150% rise in the Chinese government's persecution of Christians in just one year. We don't carry arms. We will not carry arms. We don't teach carrying arms. But we can call on God. Our God is bigger than human ammunition. Hey, what's going on, everybody? Welcome back to The Fifth Seal, episode 30. I'm your host, Norm the Master's Dog Dunham, a.k.a. The Evangelical Norm. So it is November 1st, which means we are in Persecuted Church Awareness Month. Uh, welcome to all the new subscribers we've had over at uh, The Fifth Seal page on Facebook and at the Evangelical Norm channel on YouTube. I appreciate every one of you coming, uh, especially if you're coming based off of the invitation that I sent out this week. Um, once a year, I do a mass send out of an invitation on Facebook. I warn everybody beforehand. Uh, I don't send out the invitation more than once. If you decline it, no harm, no foul, no hurt feelings. Uh, if you accept it, fantastic. Next year, if you declined it this year, you'll get the invitation again next year as we hit this month. So Persecuted Church Awareness Month was just something I came up with uh, about 10 years ago. It happened to, I didn't know that it did at the time, but it happens to coincide with the International Day of Prayer for the Persecuted Church, which is the first Sunday in November. So, I mean, this is all just kind of came together. This whole podcast that started as Persecuted Church Awareness Month was based off of essentially a challenge from a person who claims that the persecution of their church proves that it's a true church. And I'm like, no, it doesn't. Uh, and they were and I said I made the comment that uh, Christians over tens of thousands of Christians are brutally beaten, imprisoned, murdered, raped, maimed every day for their faith in Christ. And the challenge came to me that I could not come up with one story of persecution every day for a month to prove that point that essentially it was the Mormon church uh, was claiming someone was claiming the Mormon church's truth based on how much they've been persecuted. And I'm like, you haven't been persecuted all that much. I mean, over the history of the Mormon church, there are very few in comparison to what mainstream Christianity deals with on a daily basis. So that was the challenge that came to me. That was the birth of this podcast, which is actually the first podcast I ever did and continues on to this day. A few years ago, I expanded it to and changed the name to the fifth seal, expanded it to an entire year. So from January to October, twice a month, I count down from number 50 to number 31 of the countries where persecution is worst on Open Doors USA's World Watch List. Then through the month of November, count down from uh, country number 30 to number one on the 30 days of November. So it is a countdown. That's why the episode numbers go backwards. Last week we did episode 31. Tomorrow I will do episode 29 and so on throughout this month until we reach number one. So there's just a little bit of the background. Uh, I usually do that at the beginning of every podcast through the January through October. I won't do that every day. I've tried to keep these podcasts, through, especially through this month, uh, to about 10 to 15 minutes at the most. Share a story of persecution. Talk about the country uh, that is that number country of persecution on the world watch list. And then we pray. So again, this is this is the only podcast where I, I pray um, regularly. I, I've been known to stop and have to pray at some point in time in other podcasts, but this is the intention of this podcast, and the invitation is put out to you guys to join us in prayer for our brothers and sisters around the world who are persecuted because of their faith in Christ throughout this month and then a couple of times a month throughout the rest of the year. So all that being said, it is Monday, November 1st, this is our update on the persecuted church around the world. This is from persecution.org. Two churches and a Baptist office hit with incendiary rockets in Chin State. 
in the latest major offensive against the town of Thantling in the predominantly Christian Chin state, the Burmese army, Tatmadaw, launched a few rounds of incendiary rockets and lit more than 100 houses on fire, along with three Christian buildings. Beginning at 11 a.m. on October 29th, the Tatmadaw began to fire heavy artillery into the town from the nearby military base. According to Chinlan Defense Force, a local armed group, the fire occurred following gunshots that killed one of the Tatmadaw soldiers by CDF as a soldier was breaking into houses and looting properties earlier. One CDF member told the Chinlan Post, quote, We are unsure about how the fire started, but we assume that they were deliberate that they deliberately burned down houses after they fired artillery shells as our CDF members in town retreated to avoid artillery shells, unquote. Once home to nearly 10,000 residents, Thantling now sits empty with the majority already fled to she seek shelter. The absence of villagers means that the town will soon be consumed with fire. Chin Human Rights Organization reports that several religious buildings, including Church on the Rock, Presbyterian Church, and a building attacked to the Thant Lake Baptist Church, the largest congregation in town, have also caught fire. The first rockets to be fired into the town landed at the entrances to the Thant Lake Baptist Church. There are also reports that soldiers have come out on the streets and deliberately torched houses in different locations. CHRO reiterates its call to the UN Security Council to convene an emergency meeting to address the situation in Chin State. So again, we've talked about this, how you get these areas where they come under fire by religious extremists, but then you have these other places where it's literally like governmental groups or militant groups that are causing, whether they're atheistic or some kind of religion, where they're causing these things to happen and attacking these people's villages, homes, towns, uh, congregations, churches, and so on, so on, simply because they are uh, followers of, of Jesus or claim to be uh, Christians, share the gospel, and so on. So we'll pray for our, our brothers and sisters in Chin State, uh, those who have lived in this, this town, um, Thantling, uh, pray for those churches, those congregations, uh, that God will restore them in those areas. And that brings us to our country on the world watch list this week, number 30, which is Colombia. So a few facts about Colombia. The persecution score is 67. The region is Latin America. Persecution type is organized crime and corruption. Main religion in the area is Christianity. The persecution level is very high. The population of Colombia is about 50,220,000, of which about 47,706,000 uh, are Christians. So a, a very large majority are Christians, and the, the persecution comes from a small group of organized crime and corruption. The government is a presidential republic, and the leader is President Ivan Duque, I believe is how the name is pronounced. So, uh, what does persecution look like in Colombia? What is life like for the Christians there? In Colombia, a largely Christian country, persecution is localized and violent. Christ church leaders are threatened, harassed, extorted, and even murdered as a result of the violence perpetrated by guerrillas and, uh, and other criminal groups, especially in the country's more remote areas. In most cases, this violence is a direct result of Christians denouncing corruption and violence, working for the defense of human and environmental rights, serving among youth, and pursuing peace and justice, all endangering the illegal activities of criminal gangs. Christians are seen as impediments to the forced recruitment of people, especially youth, to, re to rebel groups and to the drug trade and organized crime that pay for these groups. In indigenous communities, significant opposition exists towards Christian missionaries and indigenous converts who can face imprisonment, physical abuse, and the confiscation of property, among other forms of punishment. In addition, there seems to be an increasing intolerance for Christians in the public sphere and an emphasis on secularism over, all, over and above a pluralistic society that values all voices, including Christians. Christians can be wrongly seen as bigots or discriminatory, and opposition to historical Christian beliefs has been violent at times. 
what has changed in Colombia. Colombia's rank on the 2021 World Watch list rose by 11 spots over last year's list. The most significant factors leading to the country's steady rise are the li- up the list are the violence from rebel groups, including the return of a group within FARC to guerrilla activities. Along with the persecution faced by indigenous Christians who have departed a traditional religion, additionally, the impact of the COVID-19 pandemic has greatly affected groups who were already vulnerable to criminal gangs, particularly in areas of the country that are at least partially controlled by these violent groups. Who is the most vulnerable to persecution? Christians most at risk in Colombia are followers of Christ who live in regions where rebel groups and drug gangs, which in some contexts can be the same thing, exert control. Christians who live out the gospel threaten to disrupt the drug trade and the ability of the local criminals to maintain their authority. Therefore, these groups target church leaders, inflicting violence on them and their communities. The other exceptionally vulnerable vulnerable group is indigenous people who convert to Christianity. Often, these Christians live in semi-autonomous regions where local authorities exert significant power. Because following Jesus is viewed as a betrayal of culture and heritage, this means Christians can be expelled from their homes or be targeted for significant and overwhelming persecution. So some prayer points for Colombia and then we'll pray. Pray for Christians in indigenous communities. In Colombia, because of the coronavirus pandemic, indigenous communities are restricting access to their communities and in some cases blocking roads that lead to their native lands. These actions prevent missionaries from reaching out to Christians and even providing help. Pray for Christians living in areas controlled by rebel and criminal groups. Pray God would keep them safe and give them the courage to continue to live out and preach the gospel. Pray for the families of church leaders who have been killed in Colombia this year. Pray God will be their comfort and will bring them healing from trauma. So let's pray. Father, we thank you again for this time we have to come together Uh, to lift up our voices to pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Lord, we thank you that we still enjoy this social media platform where we can come together at one time over vast distances or even come together across a a, a span of time. Lord, as many people will watch this video or listen to this podcast later in the day, even later in the week, and yet still join their voices with ours to pray for our brothers and sisters who are persecuted because of their faith in you. Father, we lift up our our brothers and the families in Chin State, in uh, in Myanmar, Lord, that you would uh, help to restore that area that as... Uh, Christians continue to be bold and and proclaim the gospel that you would help them to move back into the area to rebuild the churches and homes that have been destroyed. Lord, that you would use their witness and their uh, their proclamation of the gospel to even draw those who persecute them, draw the 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 militant groups and the governmental groups, the the uh, all just all the different groups that attack these Christians in the area, Lord that you would use the proclamation of the gospel to draw them to repentance and faith, uh, that they would uh, experience a miracle of regeneration and follow after you, Lord, and that these areas in Myanmar would be rebuilt um, and repatriated by the people who have fled over time. And Lord, we pray for our brothers and sisters in Colombia. We pray for the indigenous communities, those Christians who have converted from tribal religions or traditional religions um, and experienced persecution from families and communities. Lord, we pray that, that you would protect them in those areas, that you would protect their homes and their families. Lord, that you would open up the areas, that they would stop blocking out missionaries who only want to bring help and bring the gospel to bring discipleship and training to those Christians in those areas. Lord, we pray for those living in areas controlled by organized crime, rebel groups, drug groups. Lord, again, that you would use the proclamation of the gospel, that you would embolden them to continue to share your truth and share your word and and share with those who would commit these crimes and acts of of, of violence against church leaders and so on, Lord, that you would use their witness to them to draw them to repentance and faith, to turn their hearts to you, Lord, and that these, these areas would be changed 
by the proclamation of the gospel. And we pray for the church leaders, God, that you would comfort their families, that you would keep them safe, and that you would make them bold in their proclamation of the gospel, uh, that, that many would hear uh, the truth of what Jesus did uh, by dying upon the cross to pay the penalty for their sins, that they would recognize their need for a Savior, that they would recognize that by none of their own works can they be saved, but only by the, the, the sacrificial work of Christ upon the cross that can save them, Lord. And we praise you for what he did, and we just ask that the Holy Spirit would move through these areas and turn the hearts of those people towards repentance and faith in Christ, and that it would be, that it would be done uh, in your name and for your glory, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you guys again for taking the time to uh, pray with me. Again, today's episode was a little longer just to get all the logistical stuff out at the beginning. Uh, but the next, throughout the rest of this month, if you can spare 10 to 15 minutes to come listen to the ways that our brothers and sisters are being persecuted. Pray for those people. Pray for these countries on Open Doors USA, Open Doors USA's World Watch List. Um, and, and join together. Invite people who you might know that would be willing to join us in prayer as well. And as always, preach the gospel at all times. Use words. They're necessary. And until tomorrow, Soli Deo Gloria.